What makes humans unique is our ability to think, to reason, to plan, and to communicate. Any accomplishment, a game, a hobby, a building project, or a technological advancement begins with a plan. Plans can take many forms, from rough sketches, to football play diagrams, to road maps. Just as maps use different symbols to show different geographical features, blueprints for parts to be manufactured use different symbols to show different part features. They're easy to understand when you know what the symbols mean. This is Module 1 of the Excel Training No Sweat Blueprint Reading Program, Line Drawings. It will guide you through the process of reading blueprints. Module 1 is divided into three lessons. Lesson 1 covers projections, or views, and types of lines. Lesson 2 introduces the way part features are shown on drawings and how they're dimensioned. Lesson 3 covers scale drawings and how parts are drawn in section on blueprints. This is Lesson 1, Projections and Types of Lines. When you've completed this lesson, you'll be able to find basic information in the title block, interpret the different views or projections shown on a blueprint, identify basic part characteristics from the view shown, and identify the various types of lines used to draw the part. At first glance, blueprints can seem confusing. Just as you can't imagine road conditions from looking at a map, it's not always obvious what the blueprint is showing or what the final part will look like. However, as with any drawing or map, it's easy if you know where to start. When you're looking at a map to plan a trip, your first step is to check the legend. It gives you the map title and scale. The title block of a blueprint gives you the same kind of information about the part being shown, but more. You'll usually find the title block at the bottom or lower right of the drawing. The title block tells you the company name and address, title of part and part number, scale, date the drawing was made, tolerancing of all dimensions, material from which the part is made, heat treat process, dimension notation, finish requirement, print number, draftsperson's name, checker's name, approval signature, revision, projection symbol, page number. Don't worry if all this information doesn't make sense just yet. We'll be looking at all of them as we work through this program. Not all title blocks are the same. They may vary from part to part and company to company. It doesn't matter. All the information on the title block is labeled so that it's easy to read and understand. What you need to know now is that the title block will give you valuable information about the part. After you look at the title block, you'll need to identify each projection or view shown. Let's see why. You've probably heard the story of the five blind men who were asked, what is an elephant? One felt the trunk and said, an elephant is very like a snake. Another felt the tail and said, an elephant is very like a rope. Another who felt the leg said, no, an elephant is very like a tree. And the fourth felt the ear and said an elephant is very like a fan. The fifth felt the elephant's side and said, you're all wrong, an elephant is very like a wall. The point is, even though you won't be working on any elephants, the same experience holds true when viewing a part. It will look different if you're looking at it from the front, the right side, left side, bottom, back, or top. So to get an accurate picture of the whole part, you'll need to look at it from all sides. The purpose of these drawings is to communicate with you. The blueprint will describe how the part should look and where holes should be located, for instance. The draftsperson will draw the least number of sides or views necessary to show all the features of the part. Usually, two or three views are required to accurately portray an object. More complex parts may require more than three drawings to clearly show all features. With this die, as with most parts, there are six possible views or projections. They are the front view, the top view, the right side view, the left side view, the back view, and the bottom view. An easy way to imagine these views is to take another look at our die and imagine that you're peeling off each side, one at a time. First, you could take off the right side. This would be the right side view on the blueprint. If you were to take off the top, it could become the top view. If you were to take off the left side, it would become the left side view. 
As you look at a three-view projection of any simple part, you might wonder why the side labeled right side was not called the front side. The draftsperson selects the side of the object to be identified as the front. This is usually the side that will allow him to show the most detail about the part. Once the front view has been decided, the other views come naturally. The front view will show length and height measurements. The top view will show the length and width measurements. The left and right side views will show the height and width measurements. Sometimes you don't need the standard three views. Symmetrical parts may require only two view projections. A symmetrical part, if cut in two through its center line or axis, will create two identical halves. Stamped and cylindrical parts, such as the shafts, collars, bolts and studs shown here, are almost always symmetrical. The draftsperson can accurately show symmetrical parts with two views, a front view and an end or side view. To show that the part is symmetrical, the draftsperson will draw a front view, which shows the center line, which is a series of long and short dashes. A small cross on the side view indicates the center of a cylindrical part. Sometimes you'll also see the notation symmetric about center line. The symmetrical parts we've just seen are the simplest. However, some parts are so complex they require more than three views to show all their features. In fact, some parts require as many as six views. Front, right side, left side, top, back, and bottom. Sometimes even these six standard views aren't enough. Additional views called auxiliary views are needed to show the detail of the part. For example, look at this part, which has one or more sides that are angled. You can't see the true shape of the part in any of the regular views. You'll need additional views. These are called auxiliary views. Here's an auxiliary view that shows the true shape of the surface. It's projected at an angle. Many edges of a part are visible. You can see them. As you look at this part, you can see visible edges. But looking only at this view, there are other edges and features you can't see. They are invisible. The edges you can see are shown on a blueprint as full, heavy lines called visible or object lines. Edges that cannot be seen from the outside of the object are called invisible lines. For example, on this piece. The inside edges are not visible from the front view, but they are there. The draftsperson will indicate these invisible edges on the drawing by using a series of small dashes. They're called invisible lines or hidden lines. Whether the object is straight, curved, or circular, Hidden or invisible edges are generally represented on drawings by these invisible lines. Remember these three types of lines. Visible or object lines. Hidden or invisible lines. And center lines. Let's pause for a moment to review what we've covered in lesson one. In this lesson, you've seen how to find basic information in the title block. Interpret the different views or projections shown on a blueprint. Identify basic part characteristics from the view shown. And identify the various types of lines used to draw a part. This completes the videotape portion of Module 1, Lesson 1, Projections of Works and Types of Lines. Stop the tape now and complete the exercises in your No Sweat Blueprint Reading Participants Guide.